If you take the racial slur out of that sentence, it's just a little bit less racist. Still racist, just a little bit less racist. Welcome to Racist of the Week. My name is Reese Waters. This is where we expose the stupidity and hypocrisy of discrimination in hopes we can build a more perfect union and also laugh. As usual, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Racism. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the page and definitely leave me any possible suggestions for nominees in the comments. Today's nominee, convicted felon, Donald Trump. The context of the fact that if they're if they're as we've talked about going to now start referring to former president trump as convicted felon donald trump oh no no it's not it's not for the mugshots comment and then i got indicted a second time and a third time and a fourth time and a lot of people said that that's why the black people like because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against or the bringing two felons on stage to endorse him and appeal to black people Come on up, fellas. Rapper Sleepy Hollow. They always gonna whisper your accomplishments and shout your failures. Trump gonna shout the wins for all of us. Make America great again. Or even the sneakers. It doesn't even have anything to do with the 34 felonies he was just convicted of. No, no, no. This is a whole nother racism. According to a former producer whose NDA recently expired, there are tapes of Trump dropping and bombs on a contestant of The Apprentice. Trump is accused of using the slur during discussions about the winner of the first season. Now, rumors have long circulated that Trump used the N-word during The Apprentice's filming, with many calling for former executive producer Mark Burnett to release the footage. Emmy-nominated producer Bill Pruitt, whose NDA expired after 20 years, shared his account with Slate detailing Trump's comments. And if there's a takeaway here, you know, other than the whole Donald Trump being racist, is we need to put some more time on them NDAs. I, I think so. Yeah, I think we've all learned to put a little bit more time on those NDAs. Now, Bill Pruitt recalls a discussion about the final contestant, Bill Ranchich, who won the season, and Kwame Jackson, a black man, during the discussion, Trump allegedly asked, would America buy a N winning? So not just did he use the slur, he used the slur in the context of, I don't know if America is really going to get behind a black dude winning, you know, a business competition. You know what I mean? I, that just, I think, I think that might be a little too far fetched. Blacks in business? Ah. I don't know. You know what? If you take the racial slur out of that sentence, it's just a little bit less racist. Still racist, just a little bit less racist. That's how racist that statement is, that you could you lose the slur and he would still be a nominee for Racist of the Week. Here is the whole exchange. Quote, I think Kwame would be a great addition to the organization, which was said to Trump, who winces while his head bobs around in reaction to what he's hearing and clearly resisting. Why didn't he just fire her, Trump asked, referring to Omarosa. It's a reasonable question, given that this is the first time we've ever been in this situation. None of this is something we expected. That's not his job, Beanstalk says to Trump. That's yours. Trump's head continues to bob. I don't think he knew he had the ability to do that. Trump winces again. Yeah, to no one in particular. But I mean, would America buy an in winning? Captures pale skin goes bright red. I turn my gaze towards Trump. He continues to wince. He's serious and he's adamant about not hiring Jackson. Yep, just as bad as advertised. And the contestant in question, Kwame Jackson, himself gave his opinion of 45 felon previously in case you were wondering about the nature of their relationship. There have been rumors about this story for years, but now we have Pruitt coming forward and saying that he actually heard Trump use that word. H have you heard about this before? And what's your reaction to now knowing you were allegedly the subject of that comment? In regards to what he said about the N-word, 
One, let's be clear, he did not say it to my face because it would have gone down much differently. So I cannot verify that he said that. I don't know if the tape exists. I do believe Bill Pruitt, he is a friend and I'm happy that he finally came forward. I cannot give him a red badge of courage or profiling courage like John F. Kennedy for doing that 20 years later, but we are where we are. And because of that, we are in a situation where we're not asking the right question. It's not whether he called me the N word. The question we should be asking is, because he did call me the n-word what kind of permission structure has been created downstream to make racism flourish in america but oh yeah that's right tell me again maggie haberman of the new york times he's not racist despite the lawsuits and and the ad he took out and not wanting to have a black accountant and dropping n-bombs on people because he once dated a biracial woman and she said so don't worry i'm gonna get to maggie haberman soon now, the Biden-Harris campaign put out a whole statement in response. Quote, no one is surprised that Donald Trump, who entered public life by falsely accusing black men of murder and entered political life spreading lies about the first black president, reportedly used the N-word to casually denigrate a successful black man. Anyone notice a pattern? Donald Trump is exactly who black voters know him to be, a textbook racist who disrespects and attacks the black community every chance he gets, and the most ignorant man to ever run for president. It's why black voters kicked him out of the White House in 2020, it's why they'll make him a loser a second time this November. You know, it never ceases to amaze me the mental gymnastics that black conservatives will go to to explain why Donald Trump isn't racist. And it's all right there. You ever learn the, 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 the closest closest distance between, between two points? It's a straight line. It's a straight line of racism from the 70s all the way to 2024. Also points Biden for calling him the most ignorant man to run for president. That was, that was pretty strong. Now, Trump himself has consistently denied using the N-word, even addressing the rumors on Twitter in 2018, claiming Burnett told him no such tapes exist. And now I need to holler at executive producer Mark Burnett because he's been receiving a little bit of smoke, but not nearly as much as he deserves for sitting on this for all that time. Now, I'm no babe in the woods. I understand that there are NDAs in place that keep a lot of stuff under wraps. I understand all of that. I understand there's business interests and it would look bad if you were to release something and people felt like they couldn't trust you. I get it. At the same token, how is it that me as a black man am supposed to feel about you and the products that you're putting out knowing that you allowed this man who was spouting this kind of vitriol behind the scenes to rise to the highest office of the land where he could affect policy affecting the ends that he denigrated behind closed doors. I get where you're coming from, from a business perspective, but don't expect me to rock with you. And then if we'll be honest, I haven't rocked with you in a minute. I mean, I was a fan of Survivor, like back in the day, back when Richard and, and Tina and Ethan won. Um, but ever since then, it's really, I can't rock with Survivor. Ever since, oh, well, let's play a game of hopscotch. Um, it got weird, you know, just doing pickup sticks for food. I, that, that was all weird. Also, Colby definitely should have beat Tina in season two. Now, the reality is this behavior cannot persist without enabling. And in this case, it came from our very own. What you describe in your book is a year-long effort to learn the truth about a rumor that Donald Trump had been caught on tape using the N-word while working on The Apprentice. And here's how you wrote about confirming with a source that the tape does in fact exist. Page 322 of your book. On this phone conversation, I was told exactly what Donald Trump said. Yes, the N-word and others in a classic Trump goes nuclear rant. And when he'd said them during production, he was mic'd and there's definitely an audio track. For over a year, I'd been so afraid of hearing the specifics from someone who'd been in the room. Hearing the truth freed me from that fear. Did you hear the tape? Or did you hear a description of the tape? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. And in this book, I describe this long journey of hearing these rumors over and over again. And when I had an opportunity to meet up with three different sources, they described the same exact statements. After I closed the book, I had an opportunity to go out in Los Angeles and sit down with the person who actually has a copy of the tape and I heard his voice as clear as you and I are sitting you here. You have heard the tape. I have 
heard since the publication thing. of this book. Absolutely. See, here's the problem, Amorosa. That wasn't the catalyst for you parting ways with Donald Trump. That is the problem. You you might have been miffed at it at the time, but not so miffed that you weren't going to leave and divorce yourself from the man that felt that way about you. You waited until it was in your self-interest, i.e. a book, for you to communicate the reality of what was going on behind closed doors. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. But wait, there's more. I'm trying to find out at least what context it was used in to help us maybe try to figure out a way to spin it. I said, well, sir, can you think of any time that this might have happened? And he said, no. Well, that's not you true. Know, how do you so he goes, how do you think I should handle it? And I told him exactly what you just said, Marissa, which is, well, it depends on what scenario you're talking about. And he said, well, why don't you just go ahead and put it to bed? Here you have not one, not two, but three black women out here discussing how to spin the fact that Donald Trump dropped an N on a black man. And I especially appreciate the question, trying to figure out what context he used it and, and exactly how to spin it. That came from Katrina Pearson. So, so what kind of context were possible in your mind for how he could have used it? You thought he might've just been rapping to, to, to F the police? You, 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 is Donald Trump somebody that's been known to rap along to NWA and Public Enemy? in his spare time i didn't I, is he a big fan of of doggy style like i i don't i don't understand what context this man could have used that that wouldn't have been problematic this whole thing is absolutely disgusting three black women discussing the man calling a black man the n-word i didn't hear the word disgust i didn't hear the word unacceptable absolutely nothing and it brings us to a very pertinent point about enabling okay enabling always goes bad and it looks worse under the light of day because you think if you enable maybe one day this behavior will turn around but in reality you are the one that's greasing the skids for this behavior to continue it's only going to get worse and eventually when that behavior hits the wall you will have been the one who made all of that possible which brings us to today where I'm listening to audio of three black women discussing how to spin Donald Trump dropping an N-bomb on Kwame. But congratulations to convicted felon Donald Trump. You know what, Mark Burnett, you can get some too. Katrina Pearson, uh, you absolutely can get some too since you, since you wanna protect him so much. Since you, you wanna protect him so much, you protect him in the halls of Racists of the Week. You are all our Racists of the Week, Amarosa, uh, you stay on probation for now, but I got I got my eye on you. As always, you guys see somebody you would like to nominate, go ahead and leave it in the comments, or you can email me at reese.waters at gmail.com, and be sure to subscribe to the page, and make sure you get notified when the next video drops.